and welcome to the Pembroke Pines Book Club. With me today are my readers, Rosalie LeBate. Hi, Rosalie. Hi, Elaine. And Elfie Israel. Hi, Elfie, and welcome back from your vacation. Thank you. Um, we're, we're going to review a book called Losing Mum and Pup. It was written by Christopher Buckley, who is the son of William F. Buckley. Um, two characters. <laughs> <laughs> I love Christopher Buckley. I love the way he writes. So I love this book. Elfie? I think Christopher Buckley is a phenomenal writer. I really did not like the book. <laughs> and I just would hope my, either of my children would not write a book like this. <laughs> and, I really, and maybe that was the problem. But <laughs> wait a minute. <laughs> They were a very weird couple. I know. Both William Buckley and and his wife. Yeah. I know. I think what bothered and, me and oh, selfish. Yes. <laughs> but I see. Yeah. I I never agreed with William F. Buckley, <laughs> but I always respected me too. his me too. ideas. And I me I too. think what happened to me is as I read the book, I lost whatever respect I had for the man's political views. I had a sense that aside from being selfish, he almost sold out in order to have fame and fortune. I, I had that sense mm. that he was too ingratiating to the powers that be because because he wanted to Okay, so you an interesting perspective that you took yeah. on it, right? Rather yeah, than see, I, his I overlooked, oh. the, I understood that part of it uh -huh. and agree with you, but I overlooked it. Yeah, for the, for the the, the relationship between Christopher and both of his parents, it was such a love hate relationship. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he adored them. Couldn't stand either one of them. Right, <laughs> and I felt that he protested his love too much. It was, you know, as Shakespeare said, me think the man <laughs> does protest too much. Okay. He'd say he loved them, and then he gave these horrible stories. <laughs> And what I didn't understand, and I don't mean to monopolize this, is why he felt he needed to include um, not just itemized accounts, you know, et cetera, et cetera, but seven or nine pages with just the hospital reports. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I really felt that some of this was fluff. Uh, some of it uh, to, to, yeah. to, to, to fill make out it the book, a book okay. rather than a short essay or yeah. a long essay. Yeah, you think of you think of the great minds, and I uh -huh. I, I thought William Buckley was a great mind. Mm -hmm. I always watched his program with a dictionary next yes. to me because I didn't understand what he was saying. Uh, and and while I had completely opposite views uh, than his, I, I did like listening to him, and I did respect what he was saying and how he said it. Uh, but I mean. The, he really he fills the gap. I mean, I think he's he was a lunatic. He was, you know, he was a, a, a real eccentric intellectual. And that's what I really enjoyed about mm. it. Me too. And I agree with you about the fact that that he uh, the son's protestations and of love and what have you were were uh, a little overbearing at times. But I think it's just probably because he had these inner feelings of guilt that he really didn't like these people and he was trying to you know get get around it and in his had, own psychological he way. He was an only child yeah. so he had nobody to play off. Yeah. You know it was him he was it. I, I didn't know very much about Mrs. Buckley. No, no. nothing. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know she was crazy too. Yeah, well, <laughs> but you had to marry him. In order to marry him you had to have some kind of you know uh, some kind of there have to there has to be some kind of a connection when people meet like that and do. But it's an interesting family. I'm glad I'm not a part of it. <laughs> As you say, I hope none of my children ever write this kind of a book yeah. about me. They could be. I mean, and maybe I'm taking it too seriously. It really upset me that when his father was dying, he felt it was more important to give his son a driving lesson and then have a party. It bothered me because I, maybe it's because he couldn't grieve, and maybe the book was a way for him to grieve. I but think, I think so. you, you need I think to this grieve. Is, this is his. Yeah. This is his way of grieving. But I think the reason he didn't, that he didn't go to his mm -hmm. father, is because his father would never, never went come to him. Right. I, yeah. I mean, and I, I mean, and you know what? We right. talk about the progression of human life, that you do what your parents do yeah. to you. I yep. mean, and yeah. and this is what. Uh, 
you know, I think this is part of what he was. But he didn't, he didn't seem to have any qualms. No, I mean, not he, at all. he seemed to feel this way. In fact, he says almost, you know, when his son was born, his father, he called his father in Switzerland, who said congratulations. I'm not sure if that's the same as when your father is dying. Yeah. You tell the man who's yeah. the butler, so to speak, you take care of it and make sure he has the bracelet on. Yeah. So, well, he was, he was dying for a long time. I know, I know. You know. And for somebody who wasn't treated well as yeah. a son all those years, he took rather good care of him at the end. Yeah. He do couldn't be there the last moment. Well, too bad. Do you think yeah. he's also in denial uh, of his father's possible uh, possibility, the possibility of his father having Alzheimer's or dementia? Oh, sure. Oh, sure. Because he, it seemed to me he skirted around yeah. that. Yeah. Mm, yeah. yeah, and and he was being so honest. If he if he would have said, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. So you yeah. end up thinking, well, he was crazier than he was. It wasn't an illness, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, I, right. Well, I mean, but you know that you, you know that the things that he was doing what? in that later part of his life that there was there was something yeah. physically and mentally yeah. uh, developing uh, for him. Right. But the, er I mean, certainly I agree with you, but the way he treated his son, the way the father treated the son earlier in his life, yeah. uh, what was almost despicable. I mean, it really was. It was neglectful. It was neglectful. It really it, was. Yeah. But and, you know uh, what? It, it's, it's among, it's, it's, if you, if you think about when we, when we look at people who were of that wealth and I, I like to say the quote, intelligentsia um, isn't that what we usually think about them the parents who are always off doing something while a child is sent to a boarding school or a child yeah. is sent off to college and there's no relationship how many stories have we had yeah. in history and in the past where we and, that, and that's not crazy parents that's just that's parents just that's just who can afford that kind of lifestyle and who make that lifestyle much more important than the family unit right. that most of us put first i enjoyed reading it i really I did, did enjoy reading it I, did. I, I was happy i was happy reading it and yeah. i laughed i laughed at, at at the idiosyncrasies that he was describing yeah because it was certainly foreign yeah. to my family and and that's what I you know I left it and, and I sort of pigeonhole them into a category that you, we saw in the 40s and 50s movies of the rich and famous right and that's where I sort of put them in there at, uh, and they were that's exactly who they were mm -hmm. and maybe my being annoyed is a tribute to Chris Buckley's ability to, to write. write to write because I, I certainly wasn't just neutral about it. I kept saying, I don't believe this. I don't believe this. I can't believe this. That's right. Uh, yeah. So, the so book, to that degree, right. you did enjoy it. Yeah. <laughs> the book is called Losing Mum and Pup. It was written by Christopher Buckley. And we had a good time reviewing yeah. it, if nothing else. <laughs> So for OCTV, I'm Elaine Kugelman, and thank you for joining us today. 